What's up people, hope you're having an awesome day. I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video here at Most Amazing Top 10. Tinky Winky, Dipsy, La La Po, Telly Tubbies, okay I don't know the rest of the words, but I did used to love it when I was a wee little human. But these very colourful, fat, smiley creatures, are they really as innocent as they appeared? And is anyone going to mention how creepy the baby's son was? I'm not saying the baby itself was creepy, but the concept was just weird. And I'm about to ruin it for you, so let's go. This is the top 10 scary Teletubbies theories. Starting us off with number 10 are genetically engineered slaves. Nowhere in the show do we ever find out where the Teletubbies come from, where they are, how they got there, absolutely nothing. The only thing we do know is that they aren't in control of their own destiny, they're controlled by three factors. The first is the voice, which is the maternal voice that blasts from the speakers below them and tells them when they should eat, when they should say goodbye, and when they should sleep. And since this voice is there in every episode, it's clear that something bigger than the show is monitoring the Tuddy Tubbies and what they're doing. The second factor controlling them is Nunu, the anthropomorphic vacuum cleaner that literally follows them around, cleaning up after them, and then scolding them when they make bad decisions. That's what Nunu is on the surface, but really it's more of a watchdog and the tool you used by whoever put the Teletubbies there to control them. The final thing is the mysterious godhead wind peel that the Teletubbies worship. Whenever it spins, the Teletubbies drop whatever they're doing and run to the hill and perform a ritual for the gods, trying to be the only one that's favoured. The one that gets chosen has their genetically implanted TV screen activated and it's seen as a reward because they're the Teletubby that gets to deliver the message to the other ones. The screen itself shows an indoctrination video showing the world of man and how one day the Teletubbies are going to serve us. Now we come on to the sun baby. It's something the Teletubbies won't fear, they understand it, and they like the baby, but really, the baby is just hiding the Teletarian eyes that watch them from the outside. Either way, it's clear that the Teletubbies are cut off from outside influence and are being controlled and courted into becoming our slaves. Quite sad when you think about it that way. Coming in at number 9 is their height. Now on the show, the Teletubbies look like cute, pine-sized creatures who you low-key just want to cuddle, but it turns out they're not little at all. They're gigantic. The whole group ranges from being six foot seven to seven foot eleven in real life. They'd be gargantuan in real life, bigger than Barney, and Barney was massive and even bigger than Big Bird. Tinky Winky is seven foot eleven, Dipsy and Lala are both seven foot, and Poe is six foot seven, which makes the whole show just a lot more sinister because they went from miniature cute creatures to ones that tower over you and pummel you if they wanted to. Their costumes weigh more than 30 pounds, and there's actually a danger of carbon dioxide build up in the suit if performers have them on for too long. So, moral of the story, the Teletubbies are sinister, massive giants that could very well kill you. And after now knowing how big they were, then you may also want to know that the rabbits in Teletubby land were also bloody massive to try and look like normal sized rabbits next to the Teletubbies. The end. Enjoy your day. At number 8 we have the homes. The show is filmed in this luscious Greenland area where the grass is never not green and the sun is always there. A utopia if you will, but not anymore. Rosemary Harding, the owner of the land where the exterior shots were taken, got so fed up and angry with the amount of trespassers that would come to her house because they wanted to see where the show took place and whatnot, as she couldn't take it anymore. People used to jump her fences, cross the cattle fields, just have no respect for the area whatsoever. So she ended up flooding the whole thing and turning it into a giant pond so no one would bother her again. Bit savage, I'm not gonna lie. And I feel like this is like an end of an era, like there's never gonna be Tai Tubby shot there again. It's done. It's gone, it's a pawn now. Filling a number seven slot is the Harry Potter crossover. No, there was never a massive Harry Potter and Teletubbies crossover that you missed, but Emma Lord theorized that JK Rowling was inspired by watching the Teletubbies. So the show first aired in 1997, and two months later, the first Harry Potter book came out. Now, just imagine JK watching Harry Potter with her daughter, and yes, I know the first episode aired after she had completed the first draft, but her first drafts can always be changed. But it was actually Harry Potter and the Death Hallows where the crossover came to fruition. According to Emma, Lala was the best Teletubby, so Harry Potter is Lala. Then comes Tinky Winky as the invisibility cloak because apparently no one cared about Tinky Winky, which in Tinky Winky's defense is very harsh. Someone had to be the oldest of the group, we can't hate him for it. Anyway, next comes Dipsy as the elder one because Dipsy was always screwing things up at home and is the most stubborn one of the group, and let's face it, the elder one was pretty problematic. Last but not least comes Cute Little Poe as a resurrection stone. Despite her being the youngest of the group, she clearly had the hunger to live forever. And there you have it guys, the crossover is complete. Utterly ridiculous, 
I know, but perhaps plausible. Now at number six is tubby custard. Honestly, I used to love watching them eat tubby custard or throw it around. It looks so good, I just wanted to devour it. Or maybe because I'm fasting right now, I'm finding it very appetizing when it really wasn't. But anyway, Redditor Poob, spelt with a Q, has quite an interesting theory about what tubby custard even is. It doesn't have the same color or texture as custard, so clearly it isn't proper custard. It looks sort of like liquefied chewing gum, so the user theorized the Hoover chews many packets of gum all at once and then separates them into four even molds while the Teletubbies are outside. If that doesn't tickle your fancy, the user came up with another theory. He went on to discuss a theory about how sometimes the government uses cartoons to promote unhealthy eating practices, so what if tubby custard was the pink fake meat from McDonald's? The meat there is just random bits of chicken blended together becoming pink from leftover blood. And the kids watching the show obviously wouldn't know the difference, so it would subliminally promote the message of eating things like that. Coming in at number 5 is the demon face. So I'm sure everyone watching the video has watched the show, but if you haven't, the baby sun appears in every episode and it rises during the intro. We've all seen it, there's nothing new there. But one user decided to watch it late at night one day just because he was bored, which I mean fair enough, we all love a bit of nostalgia. But he realized about 20 seconds in, right before the baby sun disappears, it morphed into a demonic form or shape. Now it wasn't that oh while the screen was stretching out the sun just started looking strange, no, it morphed into something and then stretched and disappeared. Thinking maybe it was just late and he was tired and saw something that wasn't there, he decided to watch another video to confirm. And it was there again. He watched another one and it was there again as well. And now I'm like, what's up with that? Why does a children's show have subliminal images of horror inside of it that's being fed to young children via Teletubbies? The user went on to digest the episode even more and realized most of the episodes have an endlessly spinning windmill that he reckons mirrors hypnotic imagery. Children's minds really aren't as developed as ours and so it's easy for their minds to get manipulated watching something rather than ours. Maybe your child doesn't just love the Teletubbies and wants to watch it every day, maybe they were subliminally hypnotized into liking it. What say you? At number 4 is Seesaw. So funnily enough an episode titled Seesaw ended up getting banned from being aired because of parents and kids complaining about how creepy and scary it was. The episode features the lion and the bear. The scary lion has big scary teeth and both animals were made out of wood and travelled around on skin skateboard looking things rather than being animated. The episode gained a lot of controversy because the animals looked too uncanny. They had weird eyes, weird ears, they moved on their own, they spoke in scary voices and ultimately they were just too much for the audience. At the end of the episode there's even a chase sequence and it traumatized some kids so much that they started suffering from anxiety. It's kind of like us watching a chase sequence in Planet Earth when we're really just rooting for the prey except it was kids watching a lion chase a bear. And I can see how that could have been scary but also they were wooden for god's sake how scary could it have really been? Filling our number 3 slot is The Comeback. So this article by the Sydney Morning Herald was published in 2014 and it was about the show's comeback. It's not surprising a comeback happened because the show was iconic back in the day and everyone liked it but it did end in 2001 and TV has changed dramatically since then. The producer of DHX Media, Stephen Denure, said the show depicts them interacting with technology in an indirect way. I mean they have TVs on their bellies, their best friend is a vacuum cleaner, etc. But many claim the show encourages kids to play with technology more instead of going outside and playing. A US televangelist back in the day even said Tinky Winky was a concealed gay role model because he carried a handbag that was encouraging homosexuality amongst young kids who didn't even know what it was yet. Leave the man's handbag alone, what's wrong with the handbag? It was fashion forward. Good going Tinky Winky. Anyway, critics also said the show's dialogue is mostly sing song and is barely verbal communication which is damaging to an audience that's still learning how to speak. So so there was a very nasty fight between TV consultants arguing against the show's comeback as unnecessary and damaging to the youth. Now at number 2 are the Tiddly Tubbies. So if you don't know there's actually a Teletubby spin off series that started airing in 2015 and it's called Tiddly Tubbies. And yes, the Tiddly Tubbies are the kids of the original four. There are 8 Tiddly Tubbies living in the home dome with the original four and their names are Ba, Ping, Mimi, Umbi, Pumbi, Dada, Nin and Duggle D. They all have their own colours and quite honestly they're actually really really cute. When people found this out they were shook. First of all most audience members thought all four Teletubbies were guys. Second of all they didn't even know they could have intercourse. I mean I mean, how do they even do it? Who, who did it with who? You can kind of guess by the colours of the Tiddly Tubbies. One of them is orange so I'm guessing that was Poe and Lala's doing even though they're both girls so like how? I don't think adoption is a thing where they live so people have actually theorised they have intercourse from the appendages on their head. I have no idea which goes in what and what the process is but I'm willing to go with it. And finally at number 
number one is the backstory. Scarlet Siren claims she found out the backstory of the show and it's horrific, long, but it's worth it. The show was based on a mental institute in Bulgaria nicknamed La La Land. The children inside were treated horribly. They were abused, locked in cold dark rooms, carers would forget to feed them. It was it was bad. And each Teletubby was based on a group of kids that all died on the same day. First was a girl called Lala. She had a facial deformity that stretched her face so it looked like she was permanently smiling. She was locked away and isolated for five years so her mind had just basically gone. She would dance in her room with no music, would mutter gibberish because she couldn't speak a word of Bulgarian and she turned quite yellow because of zero exposure to the sun. Yet she was always smiling, even when abused, even when her legs broke and she couldn't dance, all the time. And this of course was the inspiration behind Lala. Another kid called Towo Te was seven at the time and would spend all his time rocking back and forth and speaking gibberish as well. He was deaf and he also had a similar facial deformity as Lala which meant he too was smiling all the time. He was the most stubborn of the lot, he used to hit his head against the wall until the stone chipped off so the carers used to tie him to the fences outside. They left him there so frequently and for so long he'd get frostbite often and his limbs turned bluish from the ice. This was the inspiration behind Tinky Winky. Next comes a six year old boy named Donka. He couldn't speak because no one ever taught him to and he was sick all the time. Half his life he was starved because he'd throw up anything he ever ate. He was so weak he couldn't even walk so he spent days just lying in his own vomit too sick and weak to move away. No one knew what was wrong with him and the carers never called a doctor to find out. Donka was the inspiration behind Dipsy. Last was a three year old girl called Polina who spent her whole life at the institute. She had the same deformity as the first two so she always smiled as well which horrified her parents and that's why they sent her there. One night she fell asleep near the logs for a fire and the carers threw her into it not realizing she wasn't a log. Her skin was melting, her flesh was burning, she was screaming and the carers got her out but it was far too late. Her skin was burned a raw red color and never recovered yet she still smiled and that was the inspiration behind Poe. You may be thinking this is so tragic how do these kids even live day to day life but the only thing that made them happy were the TVs that showed them happiness and a life outside the institute. One day they realized the carers wanted to get rid of the TVs because they were far too expensive so all four formulated a plan to hide them before they could. That night when the carers weren't there they took the tiny TVs but realized they had nowhere to hide them. They decided to swallow them like they had swallowed many of their toys to hide them from the carers. The next morning the carers came into their room heaving from the heavy stench of blood. The four kids had clawed out their own stomachs and the blood stained TVs were there in the middle. Their organs were spilling out, flies were all over them, yet they were smiling. And there you have it guys, that's the Teletubbies ruined for me at least. I genuinely actually really liked the show when I was young so I never even thought about any of these things even when I got older but it does really open your eyes a bit. Let me know what you thought below and as always I'm your host Eamon Hassan and I'll see you next time. Bye!